a series of what we call these uh, involute cutters. Cutter, cutter, cutter. The number five cutter, cutter that I'm going to use is already mounted, mounted on the arbor. To the dividing pit. How to get the milling machine, machine, machine set up. Let's go over to the milling machine. 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 Um, shaper? Milling machine. I want to turn this into a gear. Now I watch a lot of machining videos on YouTube. So I know that to make a gear, the first thing I need is the correct sized involute gear cutter. And a milling machine. But I don't have a milling machine. Spur gears like this have been around a lot longer than milling machines and fancy involute cutters. So there must be a way to cut them on a shaper. Plan number one is to meticulously replicate the shape of an existing gear into a cutting tool. This would work, but it would require extreme accuracy, and the tool would only be usable for this exact sized gear. That doesn't seem like a practical method for producing different gears. Hmm. So I did some research. By that I mean a Bing search. <laughs> Just kidding. Google, obviously. I found a very detailed description of how to cut gears on a shaper in an excerpt from Model Engineers magazine. And now it all makes sense. The complicated involute shape is not the result of intricate cutting tools. It's the result of simple machining. Back in the age of metal planers and shapers, someone did geometry. They understood that if you roll a straight edge through the circumference of a circle, the resulting curve's shape is perfect for transmitting torque between gears. So that's the plan. When the shaper table moves back and forth, I need a contraption that'll roll the gear blank. So let's build a simple prototype to start with. I figure we need two ends, and those ends need holes drilled in them to hold round stuff. I do have a good angle plate, so one of the ends can just be clamped to that. The other will need a foot attachment. Aha! You see where I'm going with this? Next we need some sort of axle. smooth like a Swiss watch. So we need some way to index the part we're cutting. By that I mean after the shaper cuts one tooth, we need a way to reasonably accurately clock it around a few degrees to suit the number of gear teeth we want. It so happens that a 38 tooth gear is almost the same size as the aluminium blank I'm too lazy to turn down. So we'll run with that. The only other part we need is a spinny thing that goes on the back to hold the wires which will drive the contraption. The size of this needs to suit the size of the gear we want to make. So the circumferences are the same, and they spin at the same rate. To start with, I'm hacking away some material. This will provide a recess for a screw that will lock and unlock the spinny thing on the shaft.
This shallow recess is to account for half the thickness of the wires. The part needs two threaded holes, one to lock it onto the shaft and another to lock the wires down. And the contraption is complete. Magnificent! I'm going to hold this end together with strap clamps. Some of you might be wondering why I haven't cut keyways to hold the dividing gear and gear blank onto the shaft. Super glue. Super glue will work well enough for now, or maybe it'll fail. But an easy failure is the road to success. And the spinny thing? This needs to be locked and unlocked to the shaft, so super glue is out. That's what this threaded hole is for. And as I mentioned earlier, the second hole is for fixing the wires. Okay, let's move this over to the shaper. Before cutting any gears, we need solutions to two more problems. I need a reasonably accurate way to clock this gear around one tooth at a time. I guess you were expecting something more fancy. I think this will work okay. And also, I need a way to hold the ends of the wire still to the machine. So solid 25mm square bar may be slightly over engineered. And now, testing the mechanism for the first time. Um, just remember, I'm a true professional, and... Alright, now that minor bugs, like upside down parts, have been dealt with, the contraption seems to work a treat. All we need to do now is grind our tool. As you can see, this piece of tool steel has been used before. Ignore that. We'll be working at the fresh end. I happen to know that the pressure angle for these gears is 14.5 degrees. Apparently, we just need to grind that angle into our tool. And apparently, the width of the tip needs to suit our diametrical pitch, which is 20. So how wide should the tip be for a diametrical pitch of 20? I have no idea. The internet isn't helping. No doubt there is a formula. But that may be lost to the age of books. I'll start by grinding the tool until it looks like it'll fit in the slots. And we'll see how that works out. Here we are, almost ready to go. First I move the table up until the tool just scratches the gear blank. And I measured the depth of the teeth on the existing gear, and they're about 2.8 millimeters deep, or tall, whatever. Anyway, We'll lower the head the full 2.8mm depth of cut. Probably a wise man wouldn't try and take a full depth cut to start with, but wise men are pussy. Alright fellas, moment of truth. Put your bets in now. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I destroy a shaper. Okay, that's pretty bad. Let's go for it. Uh, yeah, so I had the machine running backwards. Okay, this time, success is just around the corner.
Hold your sheep. There's a slight problem. These don't look like gear teeth. Instead of a nice involute curve, these look more like outvolute. Um, the contraption seems to be working okay. I think the tip size must be wrong and we're wallowing out too much of a crevasse. Hmm. Other than endless trial and error, I'm a little lost about how to solve this dilemma. Then I remembered, I'm a true professional. To the computer. Here's a picture of a gear I downloaded from the internet. I'm going to run an advanced series of simulations to compute the exact tip size we need. And there we have it, 0.68 millimeters. All right, let's do a virtual reality simulated test cut. What the hell, computer? The shape is still all wrong. At this point it dawned on me that I might be doing something wrong, so I decided to actually read the model engineer's article. And there, cryptically hidden within one and a half pages of large font text, I found the clue. Diameter equals pitch diameter of wheel to be cut. What the hell is pitch diameter? Somewhat reluctantly, I pulled out the Americano's number one defense against metric propaganda. And right there on page 300 and 32,427, I found the answer. Pitch diameter is halfway up the tooth. Aha! With new knowledge in hand, I asked the computer to run another series of advanced simulations. Tip width, 1.22 millimeters. Let's see what happens. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Let's do this for real this time again. I've taken what we've learnt and turned down the spinny thing to match the circle pitch diameter. And I'm so confident this is going to end up perfect that I've even made a nice job of turning the gear blank. Oh yeah, that's a sweet looking gear hole. 37 more to go. Um, I'm declaring that a great success. So there are a few bung teeth, because the dividing mechanism is an aluminium stick. 
and somehow we ended up with a cumulative error in our timing. But I think that was because of a gradually shifting indicator, rather than the contraption itself. The version 1 prototype we've just seen was designed in much detail. This is where I'm at with version 2. How should version 2 attach to the shaper? Do we even need wires? How about levers and an adjustable spinny thing? I don't think that'll work, but maybe someone out there has a better idea. The dividing mechanism. A dividing head is one answer, but no dividing head is much more accessible. Yes, I can hear ya. No, let's stay all mechanical for now. Version 2 will be a slick looking, slick performing, gear cutting shaper attachment. If we get a few good or interesting ideas and some design sketches to talk about, there will be a follow up discussion video. Otherwise, we'll pick up this series at the making of gear cutting contraption, the second. Thanks for watching. See you next time.